The magnesium engine cases can use several different types of piston and cylinder assemblies. So we're just going to review the different things that you may come across when you're doing one of these engines. The first group of pistons and cylinders are two liter. You can see on the dome size how they have a fairly high dome on them. There's two types of cylinders. You have a cast iron cylinder which is completely made of cast iron. Then you also have the biral cylinders. Biral cylinders have a cast iron insert and an aluminum fin arrangement on the outside of it. The next set is used on the 2.2 liter and 2.4 liter engines. These will typically be a biral design. You can also see the differences in the head gasket surface between a 2 liter and the 2.2 liter. The 2 liter um, barrels are going to use a composite head gasket whereas the 2.2, 2.4 and 2.7 liters are going to use a CE ring that is going to sit in this groove. They also use a different design on the piston dome. It is not as aggressive as the 2 liters. The next design is going to be the 2.7 liter. These are a completely aluminum cylinder that uses a Nicosil coating, so no cast iron on the inside. This limits how uh, you have to treat this lining if it is damaged. Also, the piston design has changed to where you have an offset lump. These are also known as CIS or Kjetronic pistons. So now that we've got the engine disassembled, we need to look at our pistons and cylinders and see if they're usable. So the piston that I have here on the left, this is an initial wash. So it has just been through the parts washer. It's been de-oiled. It still has a lot of heavy carbon buildup on the top of the piston. And the cylinders are reasonably clean enough to give it a quick visual inspection. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my piston and I'm just going to look at the different surfaces. So I'm going to look at the skirt right here and look for damage. And then on this one, when I rotate it and I look at the other side of the skirt, we can see that I have a lot of heavy scoring on this piston. There is no point cleaning that piston any further as it's already failed the first inspection. So the other visual inspection we want to make is in our barrels. So on a biral cylinder where we've got a cast iron liner, it is possible to perform a honing operation if the barrel is still serviceable. This barrel came with this piston. So down in here, we do have some damage that I can feel with my fingers. We will go ahead and measure this barrel to see what the extent of the damage is and possibly be using an oversized piston. So on the next piston, it passed its initial visual inspection where it didn't have any excessive scoring on the skirts, no visible damage to the ring lands or anywhere else on the piston. So I've gone ahead and I've cleaned this up to the point of where it is now a measurable piece. The same with the barrel. I've gone ahead and cleaned it up so A, it doesn't get any grease or oil or anything onto our measuring equipment, but also our hands are going to remain clean while we're using it. As far as cleaning these parts are concerned, review back in the cleaning section of this course to show exactly how these were cleaned. So the first thing to do when we're going to start measuring our pistons is to identify what we are working on. This particular setup came out of a 1970 2.2 liter 911E engine. So I've pulled the spec sheet for our 2.2 liter engines and the first thing we need to identify is the measuring point on the skirts. 
And so this is going to be the height from the bottom of the skirt up to a particular point where that thrust surface is designed to be measured. So on this sheet that I have here, I have, it's going to be tolerance H is going to be the one that we are going to be looking for. So we're going to identify the 911E. The barrel has our markings on it. So we have our height group marking and we have our tolerance marking. This one is marked tolerance zero. So that's going to determine the size of our piston. So on my chart, I'm going to look tolerance zero. I'm going to come over and it's going to go 911E, which is going to give me 83.96 millimeters is the spec on the piston size. And then the H dimension, so the dimension from the bottom of the piston up to measure is 2.5 millimeters. So the next thing we want to look at is on the top of our pistons, we're going to have a series of markings. The first one is going to be the dimension that the piston is supposed to be. These will all be in metric. So this piston is 83.95 millimeters in diameter. When we compare that to our 911E for a group zero, it should be 83.96 millimeters. Now, because this engine is 50 years old, it is quite possible that it's had a set of pistons and cylinders installed. And if we look at our chart, we see for a 911S for a group zero, the piston dimension should be 83.95 millimeters. So you have to be careful when you're measuring these older parts. Even if you know it's a 911E engine, you can't guarantee that the pistons installed are the 911E pistons. So if you can find the markings on top of your piston, once you clean the carbon off, these markings are going to trump whatever information is in the spec sheet. The next marking we have is SP 0.05. This is the minimum skirt clearance. And what that means is this is our skirt. When it is installed into our barrel, there needs to be a minimum of 0 0.05 millimeters clearance between the skirt and between the walls of the barrel. The next mark that we have is going to be a production mark. This is something where if you could look up the marling information, it would tell you what day it was produced and on what shift it was produced. The last number is going to be on the bottom of the pistons and it's going to be the serial number of the piston. It'll be stamped inside underneath the wrist pin area. So the first thing I'm going to do when I measure this is I am going to mark the height on my skirt. So that is in reference to our H dimension. So if we look here, the dimension is given from the bottom of the piston up. I'm going to come back over. We're using a 911S piston because of the size stamped on it. We're going to come down to the H dimension which is going to be 2.5 millimeters from the bottom of the skirt to the measuring point. It's just good to note that it's the same for a 911E piston, so we're still in that same ballpark. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my vernier calipers and I've set them to 2.5 millimeters, and I'm just going to measure down from that skirt and then take a sharpie and just put a line right there so I know when I am measuring that I need to be as close to that line as possible. Now I've got my height where I need to measure marked, I'm going to use my micrometer to measure the skirt. So I've already set up and zeroed the micrometer. If you are not familiar with using a micrometer, we have a measuring course that you can do, and I would highly recommend doing that course. So I am zeroed, so I'm just going to bring in, and I want my anvils on my micrometer 
to hit right around that 2.5 millimeter point. And then what I'm going to do is move the piston through the micrometer range. I want to be able to feel the measurement and see exactly where I am so I can get an idea of what the piston is actually measuring. Okay, so our actual measurement on this piston is 83.937. So that means it is 0.13 millimeters below the new factory specification. Pistons are discarded if they are more than 0.1 of a millimeter below their original specification. So now that we've measured the piston skirt and we've determined that this piston is still in usable range for now, the next thing that we'll wear on a set of pistons is going to be the ring lands. As the rings are installed in these lands, as the piston moves up and down, the rings will tend to want to move and flutter. So what we want to do is, first thing is we're going to have a visual inspection and just to see if there is any signs of uh, wear or fluttering, any damage to the ring land surfaces. We can see on this piston as I turn it, the differences in the cleaning to where the top ring land still has some carbon in it. Just going to put some light on that. And you'll see how that carbon is still down in the back. Now when I cleaned this piston, I cleaned it in our vapor blast machine and I left the top two rings on just to show another method of cleaning that carbon out. That is to take a broken old piston ring and what we would do to clean that carbon is we would just force it in there and scrape the bottom and that's going to clean out any of that carbon. So the ring lands need to be cleaned before they are measured because we don't want them to influence any of the measurements. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a preferably a new piston ring and there are different clearances so we're going to check our handbook for our clearances and it's going to give us some different side clearances on what is acceptable and what not depending on what the ring groove is. So this one is our oil ring groove or our oil scraper ring. So our side clearance allowable on this is going to be 0.020 to 0.06. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my oil ring and on my feeler gauges, I'm going to go straight to the 0 0.06 because we want to determine whether or not the piston is usable. So if my 0 0.06 will go into that ring land, which it will not, and I want to check it in at least three or four places around the piston to make sure that I don't have any weird wear patterns then that ring groove is going to be usable as we are below the maximum limit. And then I'm just going to repeat that same job with the second ring. I want to make sure I find a nice clean section. And we're going to put our second ring in check the clearance on our second ring and the maximum clearance on that is going to be 0 0.05 of a millimeters. And this one will not take the 0 0.05. We want to check it in a few more places just to make sure that there isn't any other wear. And this one is also serviceable. And then we're going to do the last measurement again on our piston ring number one, which is going to be the same operation. And this one has a maximum groove clearance of 0.11, so I would do the same thing with my feeler gauge. I would put it at 0.11 and check that clearance and make sure it doesn't go in. If there is no wear, on the ring lands and the piston is in size. So far this piston is still usable. 
So the next thing that I want to look at on my piston is any types of visual wear in the wrist pin areas. Now the clearances between the wrist pin and the piston are going to be very tight. We have a couple of different methods that we can use to measure this. We could use a pin gauge. Uh, we can also do a visual on our wrist pin, making sure that there is no signs of wear or galling where you could see it's had a color change. The wrist pins are also matched to each piston. So when you are working on an engine and you have disassembled it, this pin must stay with the piston that it is matched with. This one has a blue color on the wrist pin and that's going to indicate its machined size. Typically there can be three sizes on wrist pins. They're a zero, a one, or a minus one and they are matched at the factory. The other thing that I can do, if everything visually looks good, I can take our pin once it is being cleaned up and they'll be a little tricky to get started because they are a very tight tolerance. That pin should slide in smoothly and still be able to rotate, but should have no movement or no feelable change in direction or wiggle in that hole. If you put the pin in and it wiggles up and down, then the piston or the wrist pin is worn and should not be used.